Concerning the economically unstable times that we live in, it is a great idea to convert some of your savings into real money. Now, there is a big difference between real money and what we call money, which is actually just currency. So our dollar is currency, which fluctuates. Real money, on the other hand, like silver, for example, is a store of value over time. The best way to think of it is like this. If you had saved $1,000 in cash back in the late 60s, the late 1960s, that $1,000 would still be $1,000 technically, but it would buy you significantly less today due to inflation. Now, if you had saved that same $1,000 in silver, back in the 1960s. Today, it would be worth around $28,000. So one of the best ways to protect your purchasing power is in real money, more specifically, silver. You can buy and have the metal shipped discreetly to your door, and what most people don't know is that you can actually convert your IRA or even a 401k into physical silver, rather than having all of your life savings tied up in the paper fiat system which is subject to hyperinflation. Go to dailyrenegade.com and click on the Cornerstone Assets Metals banner. This is the only company that I personally trust with this kind of thing. Click on that and sign up to get your free silver report today. One of the financial experts will speak with you to find out the best way to protect your savings going forward in these uncertain times. Hey everybody, welcome to JPD Weekly. We got some really interesting news to share, some interesting stories, uh, a lot about prophecy and um, some developments with just weird alien stuff uh, yet again in the news. Uh, so we're going to talk about all that and so much more. If you haven't had a chance to already, uh, you can find this full episode at dailyrenegade.com. Go ahead and get a membership. Uh, now I want to mention too, we're still in the process of trying to fix the website and um, get a phone app, TV app. Uh, costs a lot of money to do that, so we're just we're, we're trusting in, in God to provide that. Uh, so keep us in prayer. But uh, for the time being, if you get on the website and you log in and it doesn't load right away, just give it a few seconds. It, it eventually will bring you in. Sometimes it'll just show a white screen for a few seconds. Sometimes it'll act like it's bringing you back to the login page. Um, just give it a few seconds. The reason is because there's so many videos on there. There's so much content uh, uh, at Daily Renegade that the server is having trouble keeping up with it. So uh, we are working to get that fixed, but um, but that that's all you have to do. So it's, it's not that the website's broken. The website is just a little slow on certain browsers for some people, not everybody. Um, so, uh, but if you want to get a membership, go ahead and go to dailyrenegade.com. It's only $10 a month or 100 a year. If you can do the 100 a year, you should do that. It's technically cheaper in the long run. Uh, technically you get two months free. If you do month by month and you ha have it for a year, you'll be spending $120. So if you can go, go ahead and do that. And, uh, those proceeds help us to, um, get the website fixed and hopefully get an app and everything for you soon. Um, so, uh, all of the stories I'm going to talk about today are all linked at skywatchtv.com. So make sure to check those out if you want to follow along or read the full article. Um, but there is, uh, some interesting stuff that came up that I wanted to talk about. So, uh, at All Israel News, there's this uh, headline, Is Vladimir Putin the evil dictator Gog from Bible prophecy? He just called America satanic. Now Biden warns Putin risks Armageddon. Uh, as Putin turns 70, and this is from uh, Joel C. Rosenberg, he says, uh, As Putin turns 70, I explained on the first episode of the Rosenberg Report why he is the most dangerous man on the planet. Um... <clears throat> So he says, uh, the man is on a murderous rampage and as tensions between Russia and the West rapidly escalate, the rhetoric becoming, uh, is, is becoming increasingly apocalyptic. Uh, he says that he devoted the first segment of his show to examining the threat posed by Putin, calling him the most dangerous man on the planet. Um, from Jerusalem, he warned that 
quote, not since the Cuban Missile Crisis of 1962 has the world been so close to nuclear war, end quote. Uh, at the same moment, U.S. President Joe Biden and uh, has said nearly the same thing in New York City. Um, he said at a Democratic fundraiser in Manhattan, quote, for the first time since the Cuban Missile Crisis, we have a direct threat to use of nuclear weapons if, in fact, things continue down the path they are going, end quote. So th that's, those are pretty horrifying words coming from the President of the United States. Then Biden warned that Putin risked pulling the world into the Book of Revelation. The President said, quote, we have not faced the prospect of Armageddon since Kennedy and the Cuban Missile Crisis. I don't think there's any such thing as the ability to easily use a tactical nuclear weapon and not end up with Armageddon, end quote. Uh, last week, in the very speech in which he threatened to use nuclear weapons in Ukraine, Putin denounced the policies of Biden, the U.S., and the West as satanic. He's calling us satanic. Well, I got to tell you all out there, I believe that uh, we are in the middle of an apostasy, and I, I see it in a, a lot of sides. I'm, th this is me talking now. I'm breaking from the article, but um, you can see it in the way people treat each other. You can see it in, in the, the things that people say about each other. Uh, where's all the love, right? The, the Bible said in the last days it was going to be like that. Love would wax cold. And you, we see that in every apostasy. At, at, at the end of every age, there's an apostasy. The last one uh, was at the end of the age of Torah, which ended in around 70 AD. It was uh, 75 AD, technically. but And that, that's from the Essene calendar, which lines up right with the Bible. It, it, it appears the Essenes actually maintain the original calendar from that God gave Adam. That's at least what they claimed. But uh, you can actually, you, there's actually strong evidence towards that because when you, when you use the Essene calendar and compare it to um, all the day counts and stuff in the Bible, I mean, there's there's hundreds of places that you can line this up. From Genesis to Revelation, it lines up perfectly. Um, uh, if you if you want more information on that, I wrote a whole book about it, The Lost Prophecies of Qumran. You can get that at SkyWatchTVStore.com. And I go into great detail explaining all of that. But what's interesting is at the end of every age, there's an apostasy where the the the, the kind of hateful remarks ramp up. It gets to the point where people get violent, which we're seeing, you know, riots in the streets and stuff. We've been seeing that for years in our country. Um, and it's good for us to know that we're in an apostasy so we can having that awareness, we can make sure we don't fall victim to it because it's really easy. Uh, it's really easy to get really angry about politics and then start saying and acting unchristian. We have to remember th these people, we need to pray for them. It, it does no good to just hate them and hold hate in your heart, like for our president, let's say. Um, I didn't vote for him, but we still should pray for him, right? I mean, why not? Jesus commands us to pray even for our enemies. Uh what good is it to sit at home and complain uh, and just hold just hold hate? What good is it to get on the news and say some of the most extreme things about how, you know, every time our elections are, you know, the most important that they are, and it, it's the end of democracy if it doesn't go a certain way. And you got both sides saying that. What good is all that hate? Our power is in the Holy Spirit. Our power is in Jesus. So we need to be praying for these people. Pray for Putin. Pray for Biden. Um, pray for the elections. Vote, of course. Uh, and I know that there's some that feel, well, what's the point of voting? They just steal elections anyway. Well, pray about that. You know, we, we serve a just and fair God. Pray about that. Ask him if he wants you to vote. I mean, if you don't vote, don't they just win anyway? Um, but... Even more than voting, like what what I'm really concerned with is just all, all of all of the the hatred that I've been seeing all over the place. It, it it I think people feel like they have an excuse to kind of get in the flesh and get hateful because of the obviously objectively bad things that are going on. I mean, 
um, there's a lot of policies that are, are just straight up evil, of course. But it's not an excuse to hold hatred. We're supposed to even rejoice and have joy in the Lord through trials, tribulations, through our suffering. I mean, the way that a lot of Christians in this country have been acting lately is completely unbiblical. There's no love. And that is the most important thing that we can do. In love, pray. In love, spread the gospel. You know, you're you're not going to change anybody's mind in a political debate. But you could help change their heart by sharing the gospel with them. Praying for them. That's what we need to be doing. And, of course, we want to preserve the freedom to do that, so we do need to vote to protect that. But, but again, even more important, if think about it this way. We can go and preach to our neighbors. We, we can go and spread the gospel. We don't really have to worry too much about the government doing much of anything about that. Now, I know things are getting more dangerous. Uh, people have been arrested and especially in other countries, but, but think about the first century church, the, just the utter persecution. I mean, those were, those were governments that were completely anti-Christian. I mean, we think we have it bad. They, they were slaughtering people in the streets. Nero was using uh, Christians as, as candles, just lighting them on fire in the streets. So we may think that we have it bad, but even, even through that, the first century church, they still praised God. They still spread the gospel. Um, when you read throughout the Bible about Christian persecution, where where's the hate? Because I don't see it when when I when I read the Bible. Do you, do you think they were persecuted? Of course, constantly. They were beaten and thrown in jail and killed. But where's the hate? Uh, it it seems like they just pointed to Christ and kept doing that. So we. We've, we've lost our way, and I think it's because we are allowing the apostasy to affect us, too. Um, and if we're not going to be that light to the world, who, who else will? I mean, you may as well just throw the whole thing in and just, just give up. But are we called to do that? No, of course not. Um, so we need to pray for these people because tensions are getting high and we, we see more and more on the news. I I would say just even turn off the news. Just why even follow any of it? Why, why even allow that into your mind? I I know when I watch it from time to time, I I have to really limit it because I get angry. I I get enraged and I start feeling that, that hate creep up in my heart. And I don't want that because that that's antithetical to what Jesus has told us to do. And what the Holy Spirit leads for us to do. Um, but the way that the news is broadcast now, I mean, everything is just the worst thing it could possibly be. And and the reason that they're talking like that, it's not even necessarily because that's how it is. It's because it gets more views, it gets more clicks, and it gets it makes them more money. That That's why you don't hear, like, stuff I'm saying, you're not going to hear this on the news. Because it... <laughs> It, it, it's it's not a very popular message and people just don't want to hear it. But that to me, it doesn't matter because it's the truth. And, you know, I keep thinking about, um, you know, there's examples in the Bible, like Noah, he was a preacher of righteousness. Well, who was he preaching to? Because apparently he didn't change anybody's minds. It was only him, his, his kids and their wives that made it on the boat. Uh, but that's not the point he still was a preacher of righteousness because there's going to come a, there's going to come a time we're all going to have to stand before God, these people too. And for all those people in Noah's day, God's going to be able to say, well, you heard Noah. Why didn't you listen? You, you, you have no excuse. You can't say that you didn't know it was coming. Um, it's the same in our day today. You know, you out there sh- sh- share the gospel with your neighbor or uh, just anybody, somebody at the store. If you hear somebody, if you overhear somebody talking about politics, just go over and share the gospel. I don't like talking to strangers either, but even if they reject you, they're going to have to stand before God someday and they're going to, God can say, well, why didn't you listen to this person when they came to you in love and peace while you guys were arguing about politics? You know, I, I, I showed you my love through this person, but you didn't listen. You rejected it. 
that that's how we should want to be used by God. Instead, you got a lot of Christians calling for civil war and just ridiculous stuff. War is born out of hatred. There's no love in that. No, we, we don't need a war. What we need to do is spread the gospel. We need a revival. Um, but it is a prophetic thing at, that at the end of every age, there is an apostasy, and it seems like we're we're pretty deep in one. And so that's, to us, who, who can recognize that and see that and not succumb to it, you know, that's good news because then we know uh, we know Jesus is coming back soon. Also, the church for the past 2,000 years has had some of its strongest moments, its largest revivals through persecution. So we do have things to be joyful for. There, you don't have to give in to this apostasy and, and just be hateful and angry all the time. Um, constantly complaining about things and, and uh, insulting people that you don't even know. <laughs> Um, all that does is, is divide. I mean, I've, I've heard people say they just, they, they want two countries. They, they, they want the right and the left to just divide. How much harder would it be to preach the gospel in a situation like that? How much more difficult right now? I can go to any state that I want. I can drive up to any road. I can, um, I can knock on any door and probably the worst thing that would happen is I get yelled at, you know, <laughs> Uh, that, that'd probably be about it. If I just knocked on a random door and tried to share the gospel, it might, maybe I'd get the door shut in my face, but I'm not going to be killed for it. I'm not going to be arrested for it. Now, how much more difficult would that be if the country really did split and divide and there was a left and a right and we had to cross a border and in that part of the country, it's totally different rules. Maybe then you could get arrested for spreading the gospel. We, we shouldn't want, we shouldn't want that. We shouldn't want a war. We shouldn't, we shouldn't want to divide. We should want to mend and bring everybody together. And we can only do that through Jesus. Uh, can't wait for the government to do anything about it. Cause clearly they're, they're not going to, they're just going to inflame things more as, as they have done. But that's how that connects, uh, with this Biden Putin thing. Because it's it's an apostasy. It's just more and more hate. The, the The world doesn't need more darkness. It needs more light. It needs more love. And it's up to you and it's up to me to, to do that. Because if, if we don't, who else will? Continuing on. <clears throat> he also cited the Bible to declare that, quote, those poisonous fruit have become visible not only to people in Russia, but also many in the West, end quote. And that was reported by the Associated Press. Putin said in a major address, quote, the dictatorship of the Western elites is directed against all societies, including the peoples of the Western countries themselves. This is a complete denial of humanity, the overthrow of faith and traditional values. Indeed, the suppression of freedom itself has taken on the features of a religion outright Satanism, end quote. See, the, whether he's right or wrong, the solution for these people is war. We can't be like that. We can't, we, 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 we can't encourage that. Now, there's part of a commentary here is Vladimir Putin Gog. Um, it says, here's the text of my commentary on Putin on the Rosenberg report last night. And there's a link there that if you want to watch the episode. But, trying to see... Yeah, now Putin's threatening to go nuclear in Ukraine. Biden isn't taking this seriously enough, but Putin is dead serious. Putin sees himself as, as both czar and godfather. Uh, even in March, Putin was already losing in Ukraine. Six months later, he's been humiliated there, desperate. He's mobilized 300,000 reser reservists. But if he can't win conventionally, Putin may just resort to the nuclear option. That's why he's so dangerous. He doesn't simply have a deadly military machine. He's willing to use it. And Ukraine isn't the end of Putin's murderous ambitions. Let me, let me ask you something. How, have you ever prayed for Putin? Because he desperately needs it, clearly. I mean, if he's threatening nuclear... Uh, that, that, 
a war isn't going to fix this problem. That, that's only going to make things worse, especially with nuclear weapons. But the power of the Holy Spirit, pray for God to soften this guy's heart, that could change things. Especially if enough of us do it. Uh, it goes on. One question I've asked repeatedly by Christians over the years is Vladimir Putin Gog, the evil dictator prophesied in Ezekiel 38 and 39, who forms an alliance with Iran, Turkey, and other countries in the last days to invade Israel. Interest in these biblical prophecies has surged this year. Um, I don't know if he's Gog or not. That that depends how how much time we have left, really. But we also have to know that our God is way more powerful than whatever is going on in the world, and that's who we need to turn to. We could spend time getting angry at Biden for not handling this correctly, and even if that's right, but the, the, the anger and the hatred about it, putting blame on things when we really don't know what we're talking about. Um, but God knows all. So when stuff like this comes up, I, I'm interested in the prophecy side, of course, but when stuff like this comes up, more than anything else, we really need to pray for these people. Um, God can totally take care of this. But if we just ignore God, we don't listen to the teachings of Jesus, we're not praying for our enemies. Uh, what, what do we, how do we expect God to react to that? We, we need to ask him for help. All right. Next story. This comes from Harbinger's Daily. Again, all of these are linked at skywatchtv.com. Globalism, war, economic turmoil, devaluing human life. The day of the Lord is looming. Uh, and this is from, oh, my good friend, uh, Jonathan Bretner. He's been on Skywatch TV before. I've actually had him here in this basement to film a, um, a little presentation that he did uh, about the, I, I believe it was about the rapture. And uh, really sweet guy. So I, I would highly suggest you check out his stuff. But, um, so he writes, for many of us, this past September was a high watch period. It's certainly not that we set dates or place limits as to when the rapture must occur, but everything seemed to be falling in place for Jesus to appear during the past Feast of Trumpets. We watched with eager expectation of meeting Jesus in the air. I know many saints felt a bit disappointed and perhaps discouraged now that September has come and gone. Will we have to endure another year of watch? watching wickedness, deception, and lawlessness growing exponentially. How much longer will we have to wait for the redemption of our bodies and the realization of our glorious hope? See Romans 8, 23 through 25. I'm going to, uh, so this is me talking. So I mentioned the Essene calendar earlier, the, the original biblical calendar. Now what's interesting about that is the feast days are a little different. They're a little bit off. Well, actually, technically, you would say the Essene uh, feast dates are correct, and the, the the modern rabbinic calendar is off. But there's another thing to consider. I, I'm not necessarily expecting the rapture on a feast day or on, on anything with the Jewish calendar. I think it's, it, I mean, it could be. God can do whatever he wants, but it makes sense to me that it would just be on a random day because the church was never given a calendar. Like the church doesn't have uh, required feast days that we have to do or, or anything. You know, we've kind of made up our own Christian traditions with, um, you know, Christmas, Easter, that kind of stuff. But but that wasn't like mandated by God and given to us. But uh, that, that's just stuff that, Christians have done, but so I'm not necessarily expecting the rapture on a, on a feast day. It could be, but what's really interesting is the time that we're living in, according to the Essene calendar, 2025 marks the, 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 the beginning of the final Jubilee of this age. According to the Essenes, our church age, they actually called it the age of grace, but our church age is over. It ends in 2075. Now there's a whole bunch of stuff that needs to happen still, right? We got the whole tribulation. We have a rapture. Uh, we have Jesus returning. Um, but what's interesting is, is think about how early in the final Jubilee of the previous age, the age of Torah, 
that jubilee and jubilee is 50 years for those who don't know but that that jubilee was from that final jubilee started in 25 AD and ended in 75 AD 75 AD is when the the age of grace began according to the Essene calendar um think about all the stuff that happened in that time period Jesus started his ministry really early in that final jubilee um could we could we see something like that? Could we see a return of Jesus early in our final jubilee? Per, perhaps. And you might think, well, doesn't that start the millennium? Like, how, how does that work? Well, we, we don't know what the state of the world is going to be, and we don't know the process that uh, Jesus is going to take. He, he might have us do some things before, uh, before we start the millennium. Um, I mean, there's a temple that needs to be built or at least cleansed the whole city. I mean, re- read, uh, read the last few chapters of Ezekiel. Um, the city is massive. How long is that going to take to build? I don't, I, and I don't think that Jesus is going to come back and just snap his fingers and automatically everything's built. I don't think it's going to work like that. Uh, I think he's going to have people actually build it. I don't now. I don't know if that's going to be us with our glorified bodies or if that's going to be only, um, the, the people who have survived the tribulation, who believed in Jesus and go into the millennium in uh, not yet glorified bodies, or if it's a combination of the two, I don't know. But that could take 50 years just to do that. So it could be that Jesus returns early and um, everything's taken care of early. And then we have some decades uh, to to build the city or it could, it could be the other way. It could be. And then I, this is something that I've thought for a while. It could be an early rapture and then it could be decades before the tribulation actually starts. Maybe the tribulation starts in 2050 or something, you know, who knows? Because the rapture isn't what begins the tribulation. Uh, the signing of the covenant, the, the confirmation of the covenant with many in Daniel that's what starts the tribulation. So there could be a long period of time. And that would kind of make sense. The Essenes had this belief that time in heaven worked the same as time on earth. And that's why it was so important to do the uh, temple sacrifices and the feasts uh, on certain days, because the angels are, are doing those things uh, in the heavenly temple. And we actually see that in Revelation. Uh, we, we see the the heavenly angelic side of the um, Day of Atonement. Uh, now they're not they're obviously not sacrificing or anything. I, I, I don't know ex- I don't know all of the details on what the angels do, but we get a little bit of that in Revelation, specifically Revelation eight, <clears throat> uh, Day of Atonement. So it, it could make sense then that we have a rapture, time works the same, and we all need to be given our gifts, right? We all need to receive our rewards. We all stand before God, go through our lives, and uh, see what we've done for Jesus, what stays, what gets burnt up. Um, We have this whole rewards process. Well, how long is that going to take to get through each Christian, right? Uh, So that could be decades. So there's different ways that this could play out. But it's interesting to think about that in just a couple of years here, 2025, that marks the beginning of the final jubilee of our age, if we're understanding the Essene calendar, right? And, and uh, if we're understanding what year we're in exactly, and you know, all all of that, of course, you know, but, um, but if anything, you know, I'm not trying to predict when the rapture is going to happen, because nobody knows. But what that should do is inspire us and say, well, if all that's right, um, then time, we, we don't have much time. We, we, we got to get busy. <laughs> uh, for one thing, we got to clean up our own lives. So if you got hate in your heart, if you got unforgiveness or, uh, you know, something like that, you, you got to give that to God, take care of it. But we also got to get out and make as many disciples as possible because time's growing short and we don't know how much longer we're going to ha- even have to be able to do that. So, but I do share in that anticipation and excitement about our glorious hope, of course. Um, I want to be out of here just as much as anybody else. But, uh, but in the meantime, we also know that the Lord will tarry. He, he does tarry. And, and he, he does that 
so other people can get saved. It's it's a mercy for the still unbelieving world who might actually repent and give their lives to Jesus if just they hear the gospel. And also remember, it's not your job to convince anybody. The Holy Spirit does that. When you share the gospel, you just share the gospel. And then you pray. If they receive it, great. If not, move on to the next person. And you, you can still keep that person in prayer, but it's not, it's not your job to convince them. You should, you should know some answers because they might have some questions. You know, you should know some things, but don't, don't think that you have to know the answer to everything uh, before you go and talk to somebody. You know, don't be afraid. Like, well, what if they ask this and I don't know? Well, then you don't know. Uh, what I do is you, you can say, you know, I don't, I don't have the answer to that right now. That is a good question, but I would love to, uh, put some research into it and have another conversation with you sometime if you're open to it and then just pivot back and say, but, but what's really important is what Jesus did for you. And then just e explain that to him. Um, the article continues. I do not have the answers to these questions. However, I remain convinced that Jesus is coming for us very, very soon. Please know that the end of September did not put an end to the multitude of signs telling us that the seven-year tribulation is ever so close. With the day of the Lord looming on the horizon, the rapture of the church must be even closer since the Bible assures us that we will miss the entirety of this coming period of God's wrath upon the earth. First, Thess First Thessalonians 5, 1 through 11. We will be in heaven with Jesus before the Antichrist appears on the world scene. I believe that too. I, I wasn't always a pre-trib rapture person. I definitely am now. Um, and it took years for me to come to that conclusion and, and me even trying to fight against it because I, I was raised in it. And, you know, sometimes when you're raised in something, you get a little older, you start, you, you know, become a teenager, early twenties, you kind of rebel against it. And, uh, you know, a lot of my friends were pre wrath and that seemed like, you know, that, that just seemed appealing to me. And so I, I, I was pre wrath for a while, but I was flat out wrong. And thank, thank God. Um, now if you are pre wrath or post trib or anything, I hold no animosity towards you. You are so well. Welcome at Daily Renegade. We'd love to have you anyway. Um, so don't I don't I don't make that a point of argument, or I don't I don't wage somebody's relationship with Jesus based on something like that. Uh, I know some people do. That was actually a big part of why I kind of fought against the pre-trib view. The way I was raised, and most pre-trib people are not like this. I my when I the way I was raised, I was taught that if you're basically if you're not pre-trib, then you, you're you're kind of not even really a Christian. Or if you speak in tongues, and that's of the devil. And, you know, I was taught, like, a lot of this. Not, And it's funny because now, in my adulthood, I don't know any pre-trib people like that. I think maybe I just I just had a weird upbringing or something. Um, and I don't mean that as an insult. I mean, that th these are the people that introduced me to Jesus. So I, if I wasn't raised in that, I, I might not even be a Christian today. You know, who, who knows? Um, and that that's a scary thought. Uh, so I'm not insulting them, but I don't agree with that kind of view anymore. Um, I, I believe pre-trib, post-trib, you know, whatever. I, I don't think God looks at that to decide who's a Christian and who isn't. I mean, that, obviously, it's ridiculous. Um, so he, he continues, uh, Revelation 6, 1 through 2 tells us about the first seal, the first rider. And I saw when, a, when the lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard, as it were, the noise of thunder, one of the four beasts saying, Come and see. And I saw, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. So Jonathan Bretner continues, These verses refer to the Antichrist bringing the world together under his rule. The absence of an arrow in the bow points to his accomplishing this objective without force, although he will gather an impressive arsenal of weapons during his campaign. The World Economic Forum, under the leadership of Klaus Schwab, continues to gain influence, incredible influence over the nations. Without firing a shot, Schwab has placed many of his devotees in key places of leadership in governments across the world, the communistic influence of the World Economic Forum continues to rapidly grow in many free countries, including the U.S. The U.N., in conjunction with the World Economic Forum, recently announced their intention to change their goal of a world government by 2030 under the 17 goals of its Agenda 2030. They want to establish the new world order well before that year. Now think about that. Imagine if we're not here. They won't have to wait till 2030. If Christians aren't here anymore, if we get raptured, then there's no opposition. They'll just they, they could do this overnight. 
So, you know, we, we sometimes I've had this thought too. Like, I think like the events of the tribulation are so extreme. Like how, how is there time to even get to that level? But the only reason that there's anything even good in the world right now is because the Holy Spirit is working through the church. That's, that's what, that's what destroys the, the kingdom of darkness, the Holy Spirit working in us. That's what restrains, as we're told. That's the restrainer. So how much more then do we need to use that power to go out and spread the kingdom of God, spread the light? Not in hatred, not in threats of civil war or any of this ridiculous stuff, but spread it in, in love, in, in the light that it is. How much more do we need to do that? That's how we can be effective. Um, but I don't know how many people are, are really doing that, really taking that seriously. You don't even have to leave your house. I'm, I'm doing this video from my basement. Who, know, who knows how many people are going to see this? Maybe a few hundred. Now, there are times where that doesn't seem like a lot to me. <laughs> but, I mean, if you think about it, first, first century church, I mean, if they were allowed to talk to a few hundred people, like, all the time and no persecution, nobody's breaking down my door to arrest me for doing this. Um, imagine how much more they would have done it. Uh, I think all of us should be making videos. It's easy. There, there's no reason not to. It's really easy. And everybody has a testimony. And if you're a Christian, you, you not only do you have a testimony, you have the gospel. So get out there and spread it. Uh, I mean, why not? Um, but yeah, I mean, the World Eco Economic Forum are doing, they're doing this without war, uh, w without firing a shot, just like he said. Now, he's, uh, he's not saying Klaus Schwab is the Antichrist, but I think he's, he's using him as, as an example. Like, look how they were able to do this. How much more effective are they going to be once we're not here, that's that's how I make sense out of the tribulation. How it gets so bad so fast, it's because there's no opposition to the kingdom of darkness anymore. The restrainer is removed. And there that's why there will there has never and will never be a time period like that on the earth again. So we need to keep all this in prayer and we really need to get out there, spread that light. All right, next, uh, next story, and once again, all of this is linked at skywatchtv.com. Uh, this is from cbn.com. Bible prophecy is meant to be comforting, and End Times expert reacts to CNN claim Christians suffer from rapture anxiety. I don't know if you've heard that story, but CNN wrote this ridiculous um, article about how many Christians are just suffering from rapture anxiety. And then they told a couple of stories. If you, if you find, you can find ex-Christians that'll say anything you want. I mean, you know, C CNN can find ex-Christians that can just go along with whatever rhetoric, rhetoric they want. Uh, that doesn't mean it's true, and it doesn't mean that it's a, a good example of the majority. Um, but basically, the CNN article was, was something along the lines of like, this ex-Christian said that he or she, I don't remember, I think it was a she, but she, she got up one day, her family was gone, and she was just petrified and so scared that the rapture had come, and really they just went to the store or something. Now, be honest, has that ever happened to you or anyone you know? Like, she was scared that she missed the rapture. Okay, well, then that's bad rapture theology. If you're a Christian, you're not going to miss the rapture. So that... that but but by and large, like, have you ever heard of that? And CNN was like painting it as like this common thing because they found like two people that said something about how ridiculous the rapture is. But isn't it interesting that CNN is reporting on the rapture? I mean, when 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 is the last time? I don't think I've ever seen a, a major news agency even talk about it. So why is it in the news now? It might it might be because times times getting close. Uh, it might be that. The powers of darkness maybe know that, maybe can feel some of that restraint lift, and maybe they're getting ahead of the story. Because what are they going to say when we're all gone? I mean, the world's not going to say that's the rapture. Some of them might. Uh, but even if they do, what if a decade goes by? What if seven years goes by after the rapture and there's no tribulation, no antichrist, no return of Jesus? Talk about apostasy. I mean, basically, I, I can't imagine anyone being a Christian at that point. Um, but... 
because again, a lot of people have the perception that the rapture begins the tribulation. That, that there's nothing in the Bible that says that. Uh, so CBN News says, End Times author and expert Jeff Kinley rejected CNN's coverage of so-called rapture anxiety, argue, arguing he's never encountered the term before and believes there are some deep misconceptions about the eschatological belief system. As FaithWire previously reported, um, CNN recently published an article, For Some Christians, Rapture Anxiety Can Take a Lifetime to Heal, a piece covering a supposed end-times-inspired type of religious trauma being experienced among people who have left or are questioning their faith. Um, so Kinley told uh, CBN's Faithwire, quote, The first thing I thought was, really, you're, you're making up this whole idea of the fact that people all over, the, all over the place are just so filled with anxiety about the rapture, which I've rarely encountered. Uh, that's one thing. The flip side of it was the irony. The rapture is really designed to bring comfort, not anxiety. It's the complete opposite, uh, end quote. And then there's actually a video where you could watch um, Kinley's reaction. But, uh, and, and I totally agree with him there. If somebody's having anxiety about the rapture, it could be that they, they weren't taught it right. It, you know, it, it could be that they may have a, a really adolescent view of it, and they haven't been properly taught what the doctrine actually is. But, but th think about how rare that must be. I, I've been do I've been in public ministry for what, seven years now, eight, maybe. Um, actually, maybe, maybe a little longer than that. Uh, but no, and I get I get all sorts of questions. I get all sorts of emails, all sorts of questions. Um, never a single time have I had somebody that messaged me or talked to me or asked me a question uh, about their anxiety about the rapture. I also watch a lot of other shows where questions come in, like Dr. Michael Brown's show, or uh, and he's, he's a post-trib guy, but he's, he's got a lot of really good stuff. Um, uh, but uh, or, or Mike Winger, he does 20, uh, 20 questions sometimes. I watch a lot of that kind of stuff where real Christians, real people can submit a question and Again, sometimes you get some some kind of weird stuff, but I've I've never Dr. Ken Johnson, he does that on his show too. He he'll he'll have people send in questions. Never a single time ever have I I've never heard of that where somebody sent in a question or a comment about rapture anxiety that that they're they're they have anxiety over the rapture. I I just CNN is just lying. They 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 found a couple of ex-Christians that went along with their lie, basically, but they're just making this up. Uh, so I, I agree with Jeff Kinley here. It says, the author, who has penned countless books on the rapture and end times, said he was left pondering where the contents of CNN's articles were coming from. Quote, this is from Kinley, he said, quote, I see how Bible prophecy in the rapture is meant to be the most comforting thing for a believer. It's the bride of Christ, and she gets to be rescued. And so why should she be anxious about that? End quote. He said the only way a person would be living in fear as a result of rapture theology would be if it's taught in improperly or with poor motives or improper motives. Taught correctly, Kinley said, the rapture should bring comfort and hope. He did note, he did note some have used the rapture as a scare tactic, but that this isn't the mainstream or prominent reasoning or approach for its theological use. Uh, he said, quote, the rapture has been used as a scare tactic against people in the past to try to get them saved or that type of thing. So I get that. I also get the fact that sometimes in portrayals of the rapture, it's very sensational, end quote. And I agree. Um, a lot of the movies that have been done about it, uh, frankly, aren't all that great. Um, but but again, that, that's because a lot of people have really an immature view of what it is. And that that's why I re, like... That's why I rebelled against uh, the pre-trib teaching, because I had an immature view of what it, what it really was. Uh, once, I, once I actually just read the Bible and dug more into prophecy and then really be began to understand it um, in a more mature way, it just it fit and it made sense. And there's, there, of course there's no anxiety. Even when I had an immature view of it, I never had anxiety about it. Um, I, I just can't imagine that. I don't know anybody that has. But again, even if there are a few out there, it's not mainstream. It's, it's not, I, I wouldn't think worthy of even being reported on on CNN or any news uh, news agency unless 
they had ulterior motives. And of course, that's what it was. It was just to bash Christians. That's all it was. Um, so I agree with uh, Jeff Kinley here. But but again, I mean, the rapture is being talked about in the news. That I, If that's not a sign, I don't know what is. I mean, you know, of course, they're bashing it. But still, it's weird that that's even a topic that got brought up in the news. Um, so maybe, maybe we're, maybe we're heading towards that time. I mean, we, we definitely are heading towards that time, but maybe it's not as far off as we think. Um, which again, we, we should rejoice in that. We should be happy for that. But even if we go through our whole lives and no rapture yet, um, for all we know, it could be another hundred years away, a couple hundred years, you know, who knows, but we should still take that motivation and use it, you know, use it to get out there and preach the truth, preach love. Oh man, this world needs love more than it needs any anything else. And and God is love. Um we we show love by getting people saved, making disciples out of all nations. Uh bringing people to the Lord, talking to your neighbors, talk, get making if you're if you're a shy person, I'm probably about as introverted as I come. <laughs> um I don't I don't like leaving the house if I don't have to. Um I would I wouldn't be surprised if I'm like borderline agoraphobic. Agoraphobic can't say that. Uh, I'm not afraid to leave or anything. I just don't really like it. Um, but there's do do videos. I I do this because I can reach more people doing this than I can if I'm just out in the world. But I mean, if I'm out in the world, the Holy Spirit prompts. I, I hear something. There's an opportunity to share the gospel. I'm still gonna I'm still gonna do it. You know, we got to get over ourselves. Um, but. But like I said, if for nothing else, I mean, this should motivate us to get out there and preach the word and and share the love of Christ with people. Not out of hate. Um, Don't use it as a weapon. That's not how it's intended to be used. But out of out of love, and that's how it's going to be the most effective. So, um, that that's probably what I would leave you with today. I I do have a couple more stories that I want to talk about. These ones are a little stranger. but I definitely want to talk about them because they're, they're weird and kind of cool. Um, one of them uh, is uh, giant footprints, highways, and pentagrams. New NASA photos of Europa ignite social media. And it actually shows a picture, and it, it kind of does look like a weird footprint. Um, so I, I want to talk about that. And then uh, could the discovery of alien life spark devastating war on Earth as nations fight across access to signals from outer space? Experts debate risk of extraterrestrial contact. So again, this is in the news. You know, are aliens real? And um, I did a movie called The Great Delusion uh, that you should check out if you haven't already. You can get that at skywatchtvstore.com. Unfortunately, it is not on Amazon. They will not accept my movies anymore after Silent Cry. I wonder why. Um, but, uh, Silent Cry is still technically up there, but they, they do this weird thing where you have to like buy it on your phone or on a computer and then go back to your TV. They, they're just making it difficult. But, um, but all that aside, I have, I have all that stuff. The best way to do it is just go to skywatchtvstore.com and then you can get it in, uh, a package with a bunch of other materials. And, uh, but again, this is this is in the news, so I want to I want to talk about that. We're, we'll do that on the other side of the other side of the break, I guess. Um, so for those brand new, uh, the way it works is members, you know, people who become members at Daily Renegade, they'll either get um, when I do a video. If I put the full video up on YouTube, I make sure that members have early access, usually by like a week. You can get it like a week early. Um, or most often what I do is I'll do half the show just for everybody. And then if people want the rest, they can go to daily renegade and they can get the rest. So if you want the rest of this video and you want to learn about, um, the existence of alien life and giant footprints and pentagrams (laughs) on, uh, on Europa, uh, very weird stuff, but I find this stuff interesting. But, um, if you want to get the rest of the episode, head on over to dailyrenegade.com and uh, get a membership. Again, it's only $10 a month or $100 a year. If you can do the $100 a year, that's what you should do because uh, it's a little cheaper for you. Um, and we're, we want to, we want to use these proceeds to again, get, get the website up and I mean, it is up and running, but it's not it's not the most convenient. Like, like for example, the way it's set up right now, I can't give somebody a link to a video. 
like the videos don't have links. It's just like it's a player and then you got to scroll through videos. So if you're trying to find an older video, it's it's difficult. The search engine isn't great. Um, so there's definitely things to be improved. And we think we found a company that can do it, that, that would be interested in doing it. Um, I apologize. I don't usually like to have my phone, but ever since, um, okay, ever since Nathan's cancer diagnosis years ago, I just, every time I get a text, even if I'm doing a recording, I check just to make sure, you know, because it could be an emergency. Um, but uh, we found a company that seems like they can do it, but it is expensive. Uh, there's another one that I can look into, um, and I, I haven't had a chance yet, but I'll look into that one. But but mainly, uh, we want to use the proceeds to, to fix up the website, make it a better experience for everybody, but also to develop a phone app and a TV app, because I think that would be even better. Um, and so keep us in prayer. Keep me in prayer. Uh, keep Daily Renegade in prayer. Pray that God guides me where he wants Daily Renegade to go. Um, and yeah, just pray that when we do, when we put content out there, that, that God uses it in, in powerful ways. So dailyrenegade.com. Also, I don't know how many people out there use TikTok, but we have a TikTok channel now. Uh, so you can, it's Daily Renegade Prophecy. So you can find that trying to get some Christian, some more Christian content on, on TikTok and these other social medias. The good thing is, uh, so far, I have not had any censorship issues with TikTok. So that's really good. Um, so let's pray that continues. All right, well, we got more to talk about. So uh, if you are a member, hang on the line. Um, everybody else, thank you so much for watching. And until next time, take care and God bless. I do want to just initially say thank you to everybody who has supported us through Nathan's journey. Um, for those who aren't familiar, maybe you're just joining for the first time. For the past few years, my son has, uh, my very young son, he's eight now, but he's been dealing with cancer and remission, and now he's in... Um, um, he, he's seeing a holistic health practitioner to cleanse his body from all the damage that the chemo did, which is actually really, really extensive. So, uh, the thing about that is it's not covered by insurance, of course, because it's real medicine and insurance doesn't have a stake in that apparently, but, uh, so we have to pay that out of pocket. Um, so we want to thank everybody who has helped support us. Uh, not not only through prayer and just general love and encouragement, but also financially. It's been a huge help. Um, for those, if you want to know how you can help, if you want to help Nathan, um, best way to do it is uh, just look in the links in the description below. I believe there should be a PayPal address there. Christina posted something on my wall about all this. Uh, and I'll just read it because it gives all the information on how to donate if you want. But she wrote, Josh and I are so thankful for everyone over the years who has been there for us regarding Nathan. He is alive today because of all your generous support. Nathan now goes in for a holistic, completely natural and clean detox every week to undo the leftover damage done by the years of chemotherapy on the long road of recovery, which as you can imagine is very costly. Real holistic, all natural medicine tends to be. Insurance, of course, doesn't cover any of this, but like we tell Nathan, we refuse to put a price on his health. Nathan is getting better every day and loves his new natural health regimen. If you feel led to help us with Nathan's detox, we would be extremely grateful. The best way is either through PayPal or Cash App, and we also have a P.O. Box listed below, and of course, we value everyone's prayers. Thank you so much for helping keep our little guy around. Nathan loves you all. And then the PayPal link is paypal.me slash Josh Peck Disclosure. All one word. J-O-S-H-P-E-C-K-D-I-S-C-L-O-S-U-R-E. Uh, and then the cash app is the dollar sign Josh Scott Peck. All one word. J-O-S-H-S-C-O-T-T-P-E-C-K. And then our P.O. Box is Josh and Christina Peck. P.O. Box 396 Crane, Missouri 656. Three, three. Uh, the easiest way is through PayPal. But um, I just wanted to get that out of the way first, and I wanted to thank everybody who has helped and uh, who's kept us in prayer um, and uh, who's been able to help financially as well. Concerning the economically unstable times that we live in, it is a great idea to convert some of your savings into real money. Now, there is a big difference between real money 
and what we call money, which is actually just currency. So our dollar is currency, which fluctuates. Real money, on the other hand, like silver, for example, is a store of value over time. The best way to think of it is like this. If you had saved $1,000 in cash back in the late 60s, the late 1960s, that $1,000 would still be $1,000 technically, but it would buy you significantly less today due to inflation. Now, if you had saved that same $1,000 in silver, back in the 1960s. Today, it would be worth around $28,000. So one of the best ways to protect your purchasing power is in real money, more specifically, silver. You can buy and have the metal shipped discreetly to your door, and what most people don't know is that you can actually convert your IRA or even a 401k into physical silver, rather than having all of your life savings tied up in the paper fiat system which is subject to hyperinflation. Go to dailyrenegade.com and click on the Cornerstone Assets Metals banner. This is the only company that I personally trust with this kind of thing. Click on that and sign up to get your free silver report today. One of the financial experts will speak with you to find out the best way to protect your savings going forward in these uncertain times.